Hello everyone. In this video I will create a small poetry book and a concertina book. The book measures two and a half inches by three and a half inches, which is ATC size, and it is perfect for one beautiful poem. This is Laura. I'm from the Queen of Mirth, and I absolutely love what I do. Now let's get started. Um, this particular book I don't know where I got it. It was in my stash of stuff, and I don't. I know I didn't make it, and I don't. I don't. I don't know. I think it might have been factory produced, actually, because the cover is um, very hard and it's kind of covered in some kind of plastic. But we'll be doing the cover on a different in a different video. Right now, I'm going to um, let you know what I'm doing first. I'm going to prepare the paper this is like a it's like a pretty good cardstock but it's very porous and I don't want my I'm, and I'm going to make a painted background so I don't want my paint to be absorbed into the paper very much so I'm going to cover it with white gesso that I made myself um, and I have a video about how to do that if and I'll be posting that if you're interested Anyway, um, there are eight pages counting the backs of the covers, and I have a poem. It's one of my favorite poems. It's very beautiful by Langston Hughes. And as a lot of you must know, Langston Hughes was a very great African-American poet, songwriter, playwright, and writer. And he was born in 1902. And this poem that I'm going to put in here is eight lines long. And since I have eight pages, one line can go on each page, which is perfect because the book is very small. And hopefully it'll all turn out very well. Um, but first of all, I want to prepare the um, paper with gesso. So I have some paint brushes here and I have my, this is the gesso that I made. And um, my recipe, like I said, is in another video, and you're more than welcome to have it. That's why I made the video, of course. And, um, yeah, it, it's perfect. The, the gesso works as well as any gesso you can buy in the store. I have never had a problem with it. And, um, so... For those of you like me who use copious amounts of it, um, it's handy to be able to make it yourself and it doesn't take more than 10 minutes, really. So here, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to cover the pages with the gesso to protect the pages, or it's not really protect, well in this case it's not necessarily protection, but what it is, is it's, um, it's making it so that so the paint when I put the paint on will not be really absorbed into the into the um, paper and it's the color will remain brighter and better the gesso actually acts as a barrier between the paint and the paper and in addition to that it um, it It, well, it allows the paints to be more luminous and and the colors to be brighter and better. So here we go. So now that I've done that, I'm going to let it dry before I apply the paint. So I will be back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back now. I have gessoed the um, the pages, and as you and as I told you, I just waited until they were dry enough to work on before coming back. So, hello, hello. Um, first of all, I'm going. To, I'm uh, what I'm going to do is just paint the backgrounds because I don't want the, my background to be this stark white color or shade, whatever. I just, 
I want it to be more, I want it to be warmer. The, what I'm going to be doing is collaging the pages from image, with images from a ma magazines. And the, these are some of the images that I will probably be using. And as you can see, they are kind of peachy, orangey, yellowy um, colors. And like this kind of pinky peach, yellowy, orangey. So for the backgrounds, I want, I want the backgrounds to be kind of neutral. I don't want them to become anything of a fo of anything to focus on really. So um, I've chosen to use raw sienna, yellow ochre, I might mix in, I think I will mix in a little iridescent pearl. So we have these. And I'll probably use some of this um, shoe polish from the Dollar Tree because it's a nice brown color and I can dab that on as well. Um, I also have this orange yellow color. It's a Pabillo paint. It's kind of an interesting color and it, it's a little bit luminescent or metallic-y looking. So I'm, I'm, what I use as my palette is just a yogurt lid. And it has to be white in order for me to be able to see the colors properly. Oh, the other thing I have is titanium white for a mixer. I don't want, I don't want, it, I don't want these to be a flat color. I want I want some interest in the colors, but I don't want them to be flashy, really. Even though I am using interference or iridescent pearl, and I'm using um, this very shiny kind of metallic-y color, but it'll be fine. It, they won't stick out too much. Now, I don't have a... So this is the titanium white. And I have quite a bit. I, th I didn't think I had much. Well, I guess it's not that much left in here. Probably about two ounces. But I, um, I want to use it up, this particular jar. It's the exact same paint that I used to make my gesso, my white gesso. And see the paint, this paint is drying out a little bit, and um, that's not a good thing. That's why I want to use it up before, you know, before it gets worse. So I'm mixing a little water into it. It was just sitting on the shelf for too long. I was using other ones instead, and I kept forgetting this poor little one. This is exciting. I really, really like the size. It, the covers are, like I said, two and a half by three and a half inches. The pages themselves are a little bit smaller. I guess they made them smaller so they would f fit inside the covers. But anyway, it's all good. I, I like the size. I like the rounded corners. I don't like the way they made the covers, but we're going to fix that. I'm, we're going to either paint them, sand them and paint them, or um, decoupage them. I'm not sure which, but it will all unfold as it unfolds. Oh, we're so fortunate to be able to do this. So, um, I'm just gonna put a little bit of the paints on my palette. That's the yellow ochre. This is the interference gold. Well, if I can't open it, that's a sign that I won't be using it. Oh, I did open it. Okay, here we are. It's a little bit tight. 
Oh, that's so gorgeous. Don't you just love color? Oh, don't you just love paint? I think you do, or you wouldn't be here. Now, I, okay, I put that one on there already now. This is the raw sienna. That, oh no, that was the yellow ochre. This is the raw sienna. I didn't put it on. There. So, yeah, these colors will go well with, um, with these colors. Now, let's get to it. Now, I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just um, going to create a, um, a, a background, but it's but there's not too much rhyme or reason to it. It's just whatever is going to look good in these colors. The main thing is to apply color. And to apply color that will um, kind of set off the images that are going to be collaged over it. Okay. Um, for those of you who don't know about the interference paints, they're really gorgeous because from one side, the from one side they are one color, and from the other side they're another color. Um, they're amazing. It's like magic, actually, magical paint. So I think what I'll do is just put this little image here. I'll just put it where I can see it, just to keep um, keep my eyes on the color as we go. Yeah, I always save my yogurt lids to use as palettes. And they're very handy, especially when I'm teaching art at home, in my home, which I don't do it during COVID. But I haven't, don't intend to until it's okay. So they say the coast is clear, which they say it's not today anyway, or th this week, this month. So, um, Now what's going to happen is that the, the paint is going to end up in these cracks so that when I close the book, it's not going to close flat. However, I'm hoping that I'll be able to flatten it, and I'm pretty sure I can, by sticking it under a pile of books overnight once it's really dry. And after it's really dry and flat, I will make another video doing the cover so we'll have the whole thing done I'm sorry I'll make another video doing the uh, if I don't get that done today the doing the collaging and putting the poem on um, but I'll definitely when I do the cover it's going to be a separate video not because it's a long process, but just because there's too much standing around waiting for things to dry and whatnot. And also, I don't want this video to be too long. This is a very new channel. I only just started it a couple of weeks ago. I got my first video up, maybe less than two weeks. And um, I have been told and I've read that people prefer shorter videos. Now, I, do, I don't believe it and I do believe it because I find myself watching people doing junk journal videos and they're very, very long. And I sit there and watch the whole thing. It's like as long as a movie. 
or whatever. But I guess if maybe when they say that people don't really like what like having long videos, it might just be that those people people aren't journaling or aren't making journals, which do take a while. You can't make a journal. Well, I made one in 11 or 12 minutes the other day, and there's a video on that. But other than that kind, or similar ones to that, um, we really do need time, you know, or to do a lot of art things. Oh, this is so good. It's so gorgeous, you guys. Oh, I wish you were here. But you are here. It's so cool. I'm happy. I love sharing what I know. I'm not saying I know everything or whatever, but whatever little I do know, I really love to be able to share it with people who are interested. So... Um, thank you for being here, and I hope that you like it. And if you like it, please subscribe to my channel, because that helps me a lot. And it will also be good if you like my videos, because you'll be able to have access to them easier. You won't have to try to remember who I am. So... Yeah, this is going to be good. I think this will be great. It's quite fun. Right now I'm in Vancouver, BC, and I don't know what time it is, but I think it's around 10 p.m. And I live with my 26-year-old grandson, and he's upstairs. And I've asked him to please don't even sneeze or slam your door or have your TV on loud because it'll be heard on the video. So he's being very quiet. And there's no one else here. Well, you guys, I'm just about finished this. Awesome. Ah, back over there. Okay. Now, having finished the background painting part, I'm going to just clean my brush, lay it flat. You know that 
it's important to not leave brushes in water like this because they will end up bending like this and then you'll lose the proper shape of your brush. Wrecks it actually. No, I oh yeah, here. I have the I also have this. It's Dilutions Ink Spray and it's called White Linen is the color and it's by Ranger. And I thought I'd maybe give a spray on here. Just a bit. Now, I don't want too much of the paint and stuff to get into the cracks, so I have my little painting cloth here and I'm just going to run it along here. It's not going to take all the paint out, but it will help. And one of my goals with this little project is to make it flat. At the end of the day, I want this book to stay flat. Oh, that's great. Okay, now I'm going to go away and let this dry, just like I did when I let the gesso dry. Okay, okay everyone. Okay everyone, I'm back and the background has dried. Um, it's now time to do the collaging. And one thing is that I don't want to be collaging over the lines between pages because I very much want this little journal to be able to lay flat. Um, so let's get to it. Now I'm using Elmer's Craft Bond. I'm not a major fan of Elmer's, but um, even though I'm not a major Elmer's fan, this, this particular craft bond, it's extra strength and it does work. Um, so the most important thing is to, is to use the, or is to get the glue onto the um, sides, all the sides all the way around in any little corners as well. Um, there. Um, what I've used here exclusively actually for this one is I've used um, Victoria, Victoria Magazine. It's my friend gave me um, about 30 to 35 old Victoria magazines from the 1980s, 90s, up, and then this one is 1997. So th there were just so many of them, and they're so beautiful. I was able to find quite a many images that I really love, and I continuously harvest those magazines. Now, just trying to figure out which way looks the best. Um, I'm not sure. Let's do this one here, though. Now I've chosen to tear the page, the pages or the images, because I like the look. It's nice and soft, and I don't know, it's 
kind of beautiful in my in my eyes to my eyes I quite like the, t the torn look so okay So the name of the poem, I can't remember if I've told if I told you earlier in this video, but the name of the poem that I'm going to use is called Dreams by Langston Hughes. And Langston Hughes was a very prolific writer and poet. He wrote songs and he wrote um, plays, poems articles. He was even a war correspondent in the Spanish Civil War, I believe. And he was um, very influential. So, and the poem is lovely. It, I'll read it to you right now. I have a copy right here. This is the poem that we're going to be using. It's called Dreams by Langston Hughes. And it reads, Hold fast to your dreams. No, let me start over. Hold fast to dreams. For if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams. For when dreams go, Life is a barren field frozen with snow. It's just eight lines. We have eight pages, which is just perfect. So here we are. Now I don't want, I'm not particularly wanting any straight lines, although I'm not going to say I won't have any. I'm just not that keen on them right now. I hope you can see this, and I hope there's not a lot of glare. I have one of those little round, I don't know what they call them, round light. I, I hadn't made a video in my entire life until a couple of weeks ago when I started this channel. And it, it was a huge learning curve for me because I didn't know how to how to edit or make a video, but I did order a few things to help me. I did a lot. I did a lot of research, especially on YouTube, and I oh they're called ring lights. That's right. And I am filming my my videos using my iPhone, which has a good camera in it, and. And um, I had to buy a few things, and one of them was this ring light that I'm using right now. And it has three settings, and I'm not sure which is the best setting to use, but I will learn. And I hope that the setting I'm using isn't making any glare. It's, it's um, now it's about 11.30 p.m. Here in Vancouver. Um, I started this a number of hours ago, this video, but I had to stop filming a couple of times when waiting for things to dry. Because I'm sure you don't want to sit here and sit there and watch my paint dry. Um, anyway, it's it's great. I'm very happy to be doing this now. Okay. You can go here, like that. But you are sticking out here, which isn't good. Gee, I, 
I'm talking to the paper. Anyway, I'm happy to be doing this, and I like using magazine um, images, images from magazines. They're often so beautiful, and I mean, another person would have thrown these magazines away years and years ago. I'm so happy that my friend saved them and, and has given them to me. Victoria Magazine is a wonderful publication. It's so, there's so many beautiful images in it. So here we are. I don't know if I should really call this collage because I'm not putting a lot of images on, but it is going to be the the words of the poem as well as I'm just trying to figure out which is upside down on this. I think this is the right way to go. Um, yeah. I lost my train of thought there. Oh yeah, I'm just going to put the, I'm just going to put the um, words for the poem. Each each one of these pages will have one one line from the poem, and then I think I'll put when I do the front cover, I will then write. Um, I'll I'll put the title dream. Or Dreams by Langston Hughes. And if you're interested in Langston Hughes at all, I'm going to um, put a link to something where you can get more information about him. Maybe read some of his poetry if you, if you like it. Ah, here we go. You guys, I could not be happier. I hope that my happiness spills over to you. And then maybe yours will come back to me. Now, I use this for a burnisher. And I probably shouldn't do it straight on the, on the, um, image. I should probably get a piece of paper and do it this way. That would be the better way. But you know how it is. We don't always do things the better way. Okay, I need more picture. I need a bit more See, I love this one and it's all the right colors, but I want to save it for a glue book because I want to look at it more often. You know, I don't want to just tear it up and put a little piece of it over here, here or here. I, I want it in a glue book so that when I go through the glue book and dream, my dreamy dreams, I will be able to see that. I just think it's so pretty. It, this reminds me of a a French Impressionist painting. So hopefully I can see that's not good. That's not bad. See that 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 one will work. And I don't need this whole picture, so I'll use that one. Anyway. At the bottom of this video, down in where, you know, where it says more information or something like that, you can click it. I will, I will write down all of the products or the, the various things that I've used when creating this little masterpiece.
And the reason I'm using glue stick and not glue is because I don't want any wrinkles. I, and glue stick doesn't give, or, or you know, I won't end up with um, the rippling effect or wrinkles and that kind of stuff. Okay, here we are. So you can go here. Now, on this one, which is the front cover one, I did leave this straight line, you know, from the edge of the magazine page. And I could do the same on this side, just for the sake of having things matching, or continuity, or something, consistency, pattern, any of those things. Um, so I just think I will. And then, so I've got to tear some more. And I'm tearing away from myself on this because I don't want these, I don't want these white side, the white lines. And if I tore the other way, this way, I would end up with the white line here and I don't want that. So I'm, I'm tearing um, with the left side going downward. That's deliberate. I haven't got the, 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 the white lines on any of these. I don't, I don't really want them in this, on, in this particular project. So here we go. Yes, yes, she did it. Another reason to use this is because my fingers are now very sticky and they'll just stick to this and I, you know I won't be able to burnish with my fingers so better better to use this and see how much better this looks than if I had left the white that stark white background um, like that <laughs> this is what the background would have been like and it's too jarring. Um, it would be such an intense change from the warm image to the um, bright white. So here we are. I'm, yeah, it's good. So this is this is the the poem. I've I've kind of cut it up. And just a minute, I'm going to dip my fingers in the water. Oh, I don't have it anymore. I took it away. Okay, I'll do it though. Sorry about that. Um, so I have my little scissors. And I will start at the beginning. Okay. Hold fast to dreams. Hold fast to dreams. to dreams. For if dreams die, ah, where is for, for if dream, here it is. For if dreams die, so I didn't cut them apart before making the video because I didn't want to spend half of the video looking for 
two words here and two words there. So this is going to be better. Okay, hold fast to dreams for if dreams die. And you know, if, if you were going to do this kind of project with a poem, you'd be able to use a, lo a longer poem with m more words if, you're, if your um, book was bigger, you know, if, if the pages were bigger. But with a small one like this, I think this is good. Um, okay, hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken wing bird. Okay, now this one is going to have to... Probably be three lines, which is good because we want some variation. We don't want everything to be like two, 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 matchy, matchy. That's not good. Okay, life is a broken winged. And see, that's going to be... Even that's a little long bird. Um, but I can do it crosswise, maybe. Yeah, it's going to have to go crosswise because it isn't going to go across because it'll hit the hit the um, hinges or the, the folds. Okay, life is a... And I'll have it go this way. A broken winged... want to make it so that the images are completely covered either. That's not good. They're actually really beautiful. Life is a broken winged bird. I wonder if how many of you really like poetry the way that I do. Um, let me know. You know, let me know in the comments. Okay, I'm now back and I want to tell you that while I was away or while you were away or we were apart, um, I finished making or finished putting down all of the words to the poem and um, I distressed them and I distressed the edges of the book. And to do that, I used this shoe polish from the Dollar Tree and basically the ed I distressed the edges directly, and then the and then the edges of the pages I just did like this. And this is pretty good stuff, I think. It's brown shoe polish from the Dollar Tree, and here in Canada it cost a dollar twenty-five. In the United States, I think it's a dollar. It's the color brown, and it has a sponge applicator, and I use it a lot. So, it's not the only thing I use for distressing. I use a lot of things, but I use that a lot as well. Now, um, that's pretty much it for the book for now. The next, in the next video to do with this book, I will be um, doing the covers. And I haven't decided how I'm going to do them yet, so I can't say. Now, I wanted to, just before I go, I wanted to tell you about my giveaway for October. This is the month of October, we're into it now. And there will be a giveaway on October 31st. And what I'm giving away is a is anything that the winner would like to have from my Etsy store. The Etsy store is called Queen of Mirth, the same as this channel. And I have over, I think I have over 400 items in the store that I have designed myself 
mostly journal kits and tags and stuff like that, creativity packs, that sort of thing. And um, you're welcome to go and have a look. In order to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is to subscribe to my channel and then um, put in the comments that you would like, indicate in the comments that you would like to enter the giveaway. The, the word giveaway has to be in the comment, but that's all. You can just use the word giveaway or say it three times, giveaway, 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 it doesn't matter. Um, just say giveaway and, and anything else you want to say. And then take a look in the Queen of Mirth store on Etsy and um, just find something that you really like. And hopefully on October 31st, that item will be yours. Um, thank you very much for coming and for watching. And I hope to see you or you see me or we be together soon again. And thank you. Well, I already said thank you, but I'm so sincere about it. I am really grateful. And I'm so happy to be able to do this and to share with you. Um, it just makes me happy. And um, I wish you all the very, very best. Take care now and stay safe. Bye.